All right, what's going on, folks? Larry with Pack Packmaster's Dog Training. It's real windy out, so I'm going to try to talk close to the camera today. For several years now, so many of you have asked me to make a video on loose leash walking, right? How to get your dog to stop pulling on a leash. And forever I've said I don't really teach it because my dogs just do it, my clients' dogs just do it as part of the training process. But you know what? So many people struggle with it. I'm gonna give you six things today, six very basic small things that will help any owner and any dog master this very easily, okay? We're not gonna use any tools right now, no prong collars, no e-collars, no nothing. Very simple that anyone can conquer this very important task, all right? Number one, the first thing you have to conquer, you saw that door open, I gave him plenty of space. I don't ask for anything. I don't have him sit down, stand. I don't care what he does. All I need is him to respect that space. So that means when the door opens, he's not to blow through it. He's supposed to respect my space and relax. And then I can move forward. That is number one. If you come blowing through the door with that dog, you fail right there. You're not ready to move ahead. You have to conquer that first, okay? Now, the second thing you need to have, you need to have a reward marker and a release word. Some people use clickers, I use verbal markers like a lot of people do. So for the people that know nothing about dog training, what that means is you either use a clicker or a reward marker, you ask your dog to do something, he does it, you say yes or you click and then you follow with a reward. Very simple, I'll show you in a second. The release marker is also very important, guys. You won't believe how many people I work with that don't have a release command for their dog. It's very important that your dog knows when he is to be in command. Very important. But it's also important that he knows when he doesn't have to be in command. It makes things very confusing when you don't have that release marker. I use free dog. I'm gonna show you what I mean about the leash pressure right now, okay, when we mark it. But again, use a reward marker and a release command. And the, the next thing we gotta talk about, and I don't know if I said this already, sorry, is the dog has to understand leash pressure, okay? What I mean by leash pressure is straight line leash pressure I'm gonna show you. So this is the first thing besides the door I'm gonna show you. When I say leash pressure, you see me okay there, Sophia? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I do have food on me. The dog is here. He has to learn how to yield to the leash pressure. When I say straight line, I mean the leash isn't like this. You put it flat, parallel to the ground. You apply a little pressure. Yes. Okay, as soon as the dog moves towards it, you mark it and reward. That's why you have to have a reward marker. Again, watch, very light pressure. Yes, good boy. All right, the other way. Yes, very good. One more time, okay? Straight line pressure here. Yes, good boy, good boy. Guys, I know that's very basic and very simple, but you'd be amazed on how many people don't teach leash pressure. The dog has to understand it. The next thing we're gonna do, turnabouts or the 180s. What this means is if my dog is on my left, which he's going to be, I'm going to just walk, okay? I'm gonna walk forward and I'm gonna turn 180 degrees away from the dog. That means if the dog's on my left, I'm gonna turn to the right and go the other way. What's going to happen? One of two things is going to happen. Either he's gonna keep going and when he gets to the end of the leash, he'll feel the tension and he'll turn and catch up to me. That's a good thing, that's what we want. The other thing that may happen is before he gets to the end of the leash, he will see me leaving and that social pressure will cause him to turn around and follow me. That's also a good thing, that's what we want. It looks like this, very basic, very simple. Come on, boy. Very simple. You see, 
Askham's not going anywhere, he's staying with me. He's a good candidate for this, because although he walked pretty good with me from the start, he does like to pull and forage, okay? So, especially with the bigger dogs. Very basic, very simple, guys. Just practice turning. Walking up and down the street, turning 180 degrees away from the dog, getting him to follow you. Whether it's the leash helping, or him seeing your body going that way, and just follow, both are very beneficial. The next thing, we have to teach the dog to follow the left leg. We want him along the left leg, right? That's where he needs to be. The easiest way to do that is to show him. I'm gonna show you what we do, break it down into little baby steps to show him what we mean by sticking by the left leg. Let me show you. So, he's right here, right? If I move that right leg, I don't want him moving. I want him here with my left leg. Okay. So he's here. I'm gonna get rid of the food because he wants the food right now. The only part I wanted the food was showing you guys the leash pressure, marking and rewarding, okay? Let's show you. Where is it? All right. Is it right here? He's at your left. We start with the right leg. We don't want him going with the right leg, okay? Again, we make like we're walking. We don't want him going with the right leg. We move the left leg. That's where we want him. You're going to practice that. Again, right leg. If he goes, stop him. He's at your left leg. Let him know that's where you want him. Good boy. Okay? Bring the left leg up. Don't let him go forward. I'm literally just teaching him to follow the left leg. Wherever the left leg goes, that's where he... I know this looks ridiculous, you know? Hey. Come on. Okay? Alright? That's what I'm saying. In a sitting position. Looks like I'm going to go. I want him there. Right? We stop there. I want him at the left leg. Left leg comes here. He follows the left leg. Right leg goes. I don't want him going anywhere. Right? Left leg goes. We can do that. Good job. Good. So he's right here. Right? I stop there. I don't want him going where the right leg is. I know that looks silly, but you understand what I'm saying. Let him follow the left leg, but you have to show him that. And I'm going through that very fast. I'm not gonna break it down any, any more than that, or else we'll go on forever. The last thing, very, very effective, and I never see anyone do this, and it, it creates incredible results very fast. So a lot of people know when you do this, they practice taking left turns into the dog, right? The dog's at your left, so he starts forging a little bit, you make a left turn into them. What happens is you wind up bumping the dog. He has to pay attention to where you're at because if he doesn't, you're bumping into him, you're stepping on his feet, he's getting tangled in the leash. And so it makes the dog pay attention to where you're at. But I'm gonna go one step further and it's a lot better than just turning a left turn into him. So what we're gonna do now is as I'm walking, I'm going to turn 180 degrees all the way around like I did earlier, but this time not away from the dog. Remember, we turned to the right. This time I'm going to make a left into the dog, but most importantly, I'm going to take this right leg. I'm going to swing it all the way around. What happens is the dog follows the movement of the right leg, forces him to stick to the left leg, and it starts working on that rear end awareness where he starts turning into it. So for all you folks that love seeing my dogs flip into a heel, this is another tool that helps create that, okay? I'm gonna swing the right leg and have the dog follow the left leg because of it. I'll walk down this way and I'll show you.
makes this process go very quick. Very, very quick. Now, you guys see I'm just using a leash and a leather collar. A lot of people are going to say, why don't you use a prong collar or an e-collar? I'm going to explain to you why I don't. If you slap a tool on a dog, prong collar, e-collar, it doesn't matter. And the dog starts pulling and you start yanking on the prong collar, you start hitting buttons on the e-collar, what you are doing right from the start is creating conflict. Conflict is the biggest enemy in dog training, okay? There is a place for it, but for the most part, when you're trying to teach the dog, it's the biggest enemy. Conflict creates confusion. Confusion creates chaos. You want to avoid all of that, all right? So, you teach the dog like this. I want the dog to truly want to be next to me and learn through me how to be with me. This way, then, when you add the tools on the back end, prong collar, e-collar, they get it. Then the tool is able to work like it's meant to work for. See, what a lot of people do is they put the prong collar on the dog, the dog pulls, and they start yanking. That's not how the prong collar is supposed to be used, okay? And that's why they're always in the spotlight as a negative tool. But if you go through this process and the dog understands leash pressure, then with the prong collar, with two fingers, you can move any dog. It's very gentle pressure and the prong collar works wonderfully with that. I mean, just fantastic. It makes it very easy, guys, effortless. Same thing with the e-collar. Don't put an e-collar on a dog if he hasn't been trained properly with it. You guys know how I do it, right? But the beautiful thing is, once he's trained properly with the e-collar and you go through this process, then if you go for a walk, the dog starts foraging or pulling out, then by using very little leash pressure, just a tap tap on the e-collar, the dog fixes himself. And to be honest with you, any dog that I train, I don't even need leash pressure. So if Askum starts moving ahead of me and we're on a walk and he's got his e-collar on, if I just tap tap, he's gonna fix himself. It makes it effortless, guys. And here's the thing. Why this is so important is the structured walk is the most important train, training tool we have in dog training. It's so beneficial and so effective and can create so many well-behaved dogs in the household for anybody. Every person, every dog on the planet should be capable of that. It's the most simplest form of what comes natural to a dog, correct? And what it does, if you can master that, it creates happy owners. It keeps dogs out of shelters. It keeps dogs from dying. You have to master the structured walk. The structured walk, again, is walking at your side. You're relaxed. There's no tension. The dog is relaxed. His one job is to follow you. There's no sniffing. There's no peeing. There's no pooping. There's no fixating on anything. It's just a very natural, beautiful walk. Very therapeutic for both. Why the release command is so important that we talked about earlier, then when you find a spot where you want your dog to go be a dog or go pee, go poop, go sniff, you get there, you wait, free dog, ask him, free dog, Luca. You release the dog and now he knows. He no longer has to be in command. He can go do all his doggy things. He can pee on things, he can poop, he can sniff, he can be a dog. It's very important, guys, very important. This kind of simple stuff keeps dogs in the home, keeps them out of the shelters, keeps dogs from dying. That's simple. The most effective training tool we have, and it's not being utilized. You gotta utilize it. Peace.